Hi everybody, it's Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art, and I am finally here to do the next pages of the Italiana Riviera mini album. I'm so sorry that it's taken me so long, but as some of you know, I'm a full-time music teacher, and I am a, separate from that, choir director, and I am a big-time gardener, and, um, this, <laughs> and running the store. So, that's just to name a few. I'm very busy, and sometimes things just get crazy. So, anyway, finally, here, to do the next pages, I will be using the Italiana Grape Borders stamp, Italiana Grape Clusters stamp, Riviera Gateway, the Flip Fold A Black, and the Pocket and Flip Fold C Black, Distress Vintage Photo, Distress Black Soot, and Color Box Gold, to name a few items to do these next few pages. And of course, you can find any of these at huckleberryherbs.com. I'll leave the links in the description. And here we go. Pockets that I'm going to be using for these pages the 5x5 five by, five by 11.75, which is right here. And the 12 by 7.75. The way that I'm placing this one is I'm going to need to put a score line that does not exist. You don't have to stick with the score lines here. So that when you close this up and flap this over and glue it here, it will actually open like this and like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is score that little line that I need. Not right up against the edge, that would be too much. Right about there looks good. There we go. And I'll just make sure that crease takes well. this one, I'm going to actually go a little against the creases and score lines that Heartfelt made. I'm going to flip this over, which is a double one, so I'll be careful to make sure that I get the scores, strengthen the scores on both sides, so that this will actually be placed on the back of this page. And then again, it was folded like this in the box but I'm going to make it go that way and then this way and then this way so I'll have a little pocket here and I'll be able to pull it out like so so I'm going to get those scores ready for the trifold portion of the book I have placed this in the direction that it's going to open in the book so I don't get confused and I have cut all my pieces already so I'm going to start gluing those on That was easy. Didn't have to cut and score. I did strengthen the scores, but this is all set to go. Now, I'm going to put 
glue on this side of the little tab that's left, which I think in the last book I actually cut that. I don't know. And then I'm going to place it up here in the far corner of the book. sure that is pressed down well and then this is the piece I've chosen to go on that page Make sure this closes while it's still damp. All right, there we go. So you open it like this, like this, and like this. And now for this side. So with this one, I'm going to be placing this part on the other side, the back side of the page. So I'll be putting the glue there. This will be the front. I'm going to actually glue the edges of this down to make a little pocket. And as far as magnets go, I suppose we could put one on the back side of this and on the album. So I'm going to put one magnet right here. And I'll just put a little piece of score tape over it to ensure that it stays there. I'm going to make sure this is really where I want it to be. This may not be the way other people do it, and I think I do it differently each time. <clears throat> but it'll work, because I'm just going to leave a little glue dot right where it needs to be placed. See? And then I'm going to take it off this guy and put it there where the glue dot is. Place a piece of score tape over it. And I'll be back to that in a little while. Now that I have the magnet placed inside there, I can start to put on the... Um, Papers. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this guy right here. And I'm going over to the left side. And then I'm going to put glue here. And here. Fold this over and just make sure that's sealed. I'm actually going to open this so I'm not sealing the two sides together. I want a strong seal on that. And now we've created a pocket. And a piece from over here. Okay, on the inside, I'm going to remove that score tape cover, Just 
just want to make sure the glue is surrounding and encapsulating for this side. I have decided to make another little pocket here. First I'll place this top piece. And I have glue on three edges for this one. for that. And then the back. And you can see I left a fairly wide border on these pages. You can make your borders any size you want. Place this into the book. First, I'm going to check. The magnet seems to be attaching. And when I put the glue on, I do want to check that again. All right, so I'm going to be gluing on this inside and flipping it to the back side. Couldn't do that on the other page because the previous pages were already done. And this will be covered by the piece of paper that we put on the back. So I'm just going to. Get that in there and then let the magnet tell me a bit about where this should be placed as well. And I just want to turn it over and make sure that it is sealed all the way down. There we go. So, okay. So now we can put the paper on this page, take the score tape off, or the cover. So much easier when you use the tools you're supposed to. And that's it. Again, press it really good where the magnet is. Lovely. Yep, magnet working. Here we go. That's the basis for the next two pages. And I'll just show you what I'm doing in case you do the same thing. This is my vintage photo distress sink. And I'm actually just using a wet wipe and I'm smearing it onto the craft mat. And I'm just touching some spots, giving the hint of so it matches the other pages in the book. Just a light coat. So see, you can still come back. It does not have to be perfect. I'm always saying that. So if you forget to ink your pages before you put them in the book. Don't panic. You can come back and touch it. And I just find that the wet wipe um, puts it on a little bit lighter so that you're not overpowering because you can't really manipulate the papers the way you would have, you know, brushing the edges if I had done this before. So there you go. A mistake leads to an opportunity. I get to ink quickly. <laughs> no problem. And it's not as inked as, say, these pages right here, but 
it's reminiscent of the ink I've been using and doesn't leave just this part of the book with no ink. I'm not so happy about that spot with the um, magnet, but that's okay. No perfection. Just a little bit. Give it that aged look. And let's not forget the back side here, which I already did, so I don't have to worry about it. Go very lightly here. Just touching. Okay, more than touching. There we go. Just enough ink to give it the aged look. One last one. I love this vintage photo. It's perfect for this. All right, there we go. All right, she's getting picky. Just want that corner a little more prominent. Now, time to go on to the tags and embellishments. So one of the things I've decided to do is to take this little um, pocket from the A foot folds and it folds like this and has a cover, but you might be able to see that you're really supposed to do this on the outside and then paste it down. But I'm gonna use it to put in that little pocket that we just created. So I'm gonna glue it on the inside, which means these little tabs that are sticking out right here, I need to trim those so that it fits. See, so you can do whatever you want, whatever ideas you have, you wanna just run with them because it's yours, <laughs> so you can do what you want. Okay, so now I've trimmed that to create less of a problem up at the top when I fold this. And I can see that these edges are just a little a tiny bit too high for me to close it the way I want. So I'm gonna snip this and snip that, and hopefully they're about even. I think I went off. Oh, here we go, cutting a lot. <laughs> And then, check it, tiny bit more. See, I wasn't cutting that much after all. Take that point off the edges, and this will close just fine. So I really wanted to play with some of the stamps and the gold embossing ideas and things like that. So this is not going to have a magnet in it because I'm not going to cover the papers. So I may actually place it in this way and then when you pull it out you flip it open and find that you could hide some little secrets in there. Okay, so if that's going to be the center that we see sticking out, see how that will work? Then I'm going to want whatever I do to be very centered on this portion. So that's what we're going to focus on. So seeing as we have the window image on the other side of the left page, on the left page, I thought this would be nice to put on the book. Very pretty with the little bottle and glass and a little note in the grapes. And I have my color box pigment ink here. I'm going to across so I don't have gold in places I don't want it to be on. I actually would prefer to stamp this way. Put the stamp pad to the stamp. And this is color box pigment gold. So you can emboss with pigment inks and color box does a great job. I think I have some of the smaller pads. Let's see if I can get that centered. OK. 
Okay. And then I have some embossing powder, gold glitter. I'll brush away the powder. And there you go. I think that looks very pretty. So, when we put this in the book, that's what you'll see sticking out. Nice, huh? I do think I could do a little more. So let me look around and see if I can find a little bit more to add to this. So it comes, the Riviera Gateway comes with this little sentiment, sweet moments with you. And we have the bottle and the glass from the Italiana Great Clusters. And I thought that would be nice on the other side. So once again, take out my ink, a little powder. Get the ink on. I definitely got the ink because pigment inks pads are squishy so it's definitely on the other part of the stamp I want to be really careful not to press it too hard get the powder on I'm just going to leave that that way for a moment. Ink my bottle and glass. Embossing powder. and emboss. Brush off the powder. And now we have this. So I'm thinking a little something here. What about you? Something right there. So I'm thinking this little cluster right here would look lovely right there, except it's that big. It's too big. So this half of it would do fine. So all I've done was taken some sticky pad and covered up the other cluster and I'll attempt not to get too much ink on that left side. And then I'm going to peel that off so it doesn't interfere. Aim these the way I would like them to go. I hope and stamp just that one. Embossing powder.
doing a little over the crease, but that's all right. Best we can. like this and you take it out you have sweet moments with you the glass and the pretty grapes and you can open it up and keep something secret in there I've strengthened my score lines a little now I'm just going to add some glue For a second and seal it. Especially at the top where the pressure happens a lot. And it's ready to go in the book. One of the other stamps that I really love from this collection is from the Italiana Grape Borders, and it's this border right here. And I have gone through the same process of stamping with the color box and embossing with gold sparkle. And now I have this whole glimmery page. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with those. All right. Can you see what I've done with them? So I've made these little bands that you can tuck things in. And I've placed them in key spots where I feel as though it might be hard to keep a photo to stay in place on the corner. So little corner tabs. I made my own. And that wasn't hard to do. I think they look really pretty. They're imperfect, of course. They don't match exactly evenly. And I am fine with that because it's handmade and it should look handmade. So in all of the spots where a photo might fall out on you. I've put these tabs in the corners and I'm even putting the extras in this little pocket which looks like little ribbons in there. I think that looks cute. And then if somebody wants to make more tabs, hopefully they can follow along with the idea. I'll show you what I've done. I just took the strips that I made and put them where I want them put a pencil mark on either side and then put it in the light so that you can see where to start your scissors and where to aim your scissors and snip. And then you just glue on the two edges and place it in there according to how you want it as far as the border I chose to put it right on the edge of this corner. And then just give it a little white, clean it up. And some black soot on the very edge if you see any spots that bother you. So there you go. So the way that I have finished this is to just take some purple cardstock and vintage photo it. And I stayed with something just the green and the purple and uh, vintage photoed that. And then I just took one of my leftover classic petunias, which I have a video that shows you how to shape those. I forced him, so I reshaped them. And a couple of the wild orchid craft roses. I could have done um, some heartfelt roses, but I just wanted to finish this up. Everybody's waited so long for this segment. Uh, so I vintage photoed that. So this is what they looked like. And that's what they look like now. And uh, I just stuck that on the corner so that I would have something flowery on this side. And I did the same thing over here in this corner. So there we go. That's finished. We have this lovely flip out right here. And those corners that we made so that you can tuck your photos in. 
and I did not want to cover up this pretty image and fill all of this lovely silhouette here and I would like to leave it plain in case somebody does want to put large photos here so I just put that little flower in the corner and then on this side we have this cute little pocket with sweet moments with you and it does open up so that you can actually get your hands in the air and keep something of remembrance inside and then it flips open this way and you have another spot to put a photo in there and it flips open this way so you have your little pocket with the extra corners and another place to put a photo so you can actually put quite a bit in these couple of pages and I may throw some more tags or something in but I'm gonna call that page finally done oh my goodness thank you for waiting so long for me to finish this I hope you enjoyed it I will be back to do the last page hey why is my mag oh yeah you have to take this out I will be back to do the last page and then the cover and we'll finally be done with the Italiana Riviera book. If you would like most of the items that you have seen in this video, you should pop over to huckleberryherbs.com. I have the Distress Ink. I have Distress Oxide, which I'm gonna be back to do things with that. I have the Color Box, the Glue, Heartbell Creations, the Albums, the Pockets and Flip Folds. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me. Till next time, this is Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art. God bless. Up your feet.